top three beauty secrets. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, it's really bright and sparkly and shiny. Everybody. So I'm here at my mom's house. So excited to be here with her. We just got here and we thought we'd start this vlog with a little interview with my mom about 20 questions that we've received from all of you out there about her. We've gathered a few questions that you've asked over the years. It's just kind of a little get to know you, um, little things about her that you might not know. So here we go. Let's go in. mentioned earlier we are going to ask a few questions that we have been asked by some of our followers about you it's just little things about you that no one knows so these don't really have hardly anything to do with fascinating womanhood it's just a little fun get to know you okay so we'll start we're gonna do 20 questions and, and we narrow these down to some questions that we just hear really often okay what is the messiest place in your home <laughs> Just one. Uh, okay. Just one of the mess. One of the messes. I tend to be really tidy. All of my family knows this, but there are some places that tend to always be kind of cluttery, and uh, one of them that drives me nuts. And even when I clean it, it goes back to being messy really fast. Is uh, a cupboard in my laundry room above my washer, and I think it's because it becomes kind of a catch-all. Yeah. You know, I just I look in there and I think, oh, there's light bulbs in there and. <laughs> Scratch covers and cleaners and... Laundry room. <clears throat> what about the cleanest place in your home? One of the cleanest places in my home is a guest room that we have. And I always like to keep, to keep it ready for the next guest. So if somebody stays there, I always wash the sheets, put it back together, and keep it right. So if someone comes over, I can say, hey, we've got a room all ready. And, and I know it's one of my favorites because every time I go by, I like looking at it. This room is called the Blue Room, and it's just, as you can see, it's just so, it's decorated so lovely, and it just feels so special. I know you're always kind of working on it. I just love the way that room looks. It's so yeah. pretty and peaceful. And it has this beautiful clock here that we're showing uh, that Dixie made that has her timeless her, her first edition book cover painted on it, which is really fun. Yeah, it's we call it the Fascinating Womanhood Clock. What about your most prized possession? Oh, that's easy, my wedding rings. Your wedding rings. Yeah, yeah. and they're not, they're not really expensive. We were really uh, poor when we got married. Bob was, uh, I think he was a sophomore in college, but keeping in mind he went on to get a doctorate, that's not very far along. Right. considering how far we had to go. We were six more years after that. Okay, here's a really big one. Though. I think this is probably, if we were to rank these in order of how many times we get, we hear this, this is probably the number one question that's asked all the time. What are your top three beauty secrets? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say probably off the top of my head, I always try to dress up every day. I don't always wear fancy clothes, but I always... I never wear pizza clothes, as we call it in Fascinating Womanhood, and that helps my self-esteem, which helps me to be better at um, 
taking care of the rest of me. I always fix my hair. I always style it, do something with it. I always, in my case, keep it colored. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you don't have to do that, but I Bob doesn't have gray hair. It doesn't run. His mom didn't have gray hair, and I'm not about to have gray hair. It's not going to happen. So. Oh, I, and the third one is I always moisturize my face. It isn't always a certain moisturizer. I like to find different ones, and I've never found one that I only use that and don't and just stick to that and none others, but I always do something. I think another thing that you do, too, that I admire is that you cook from scratch. I do. You yeah. don't drink. No. Never have never and have. never smoked. No. I think that's a huge so, one. <laughs> drinking and smoking really ruins your skin and your hair. A talent that you have that no one knows about, or almost no one yeah, knows about. Yeah, because I think you know. I think you know. When I was younger, I did uh, Tahitian dancing, and I was I spent one semester in Hawaii at college, and I was we lived in California, so we sometimes went to Hawaii. It wasn't as far. And I was fascinated with that and the hula. Yeah. And Tahitian was much harder. So, and I loved doing that. And I, I did that and did some performances. So, I wish we had pictures or videos of that. We don't, yeah. we don't have any of that. No. Who is your closest friend other than dad? I, I, I don't think there's one. There's my sisters and my daughters are my closest friends. And because I can, they've known me the longest. Well, I have one friend from high school, but. My sisters and my daughters have known me as long, and we have constant contact. Yeah. What about a teenage celebrity crush? So before you met Dad, who? What kind of posters did you have on your wall? Totally the Beatles. <laughs> totally. I love the Beatles, and I don't know whether you know this, but when I was 14 years old, and they came to California, they there was an announcement on the radio that they were had to stop to refuel in our town and I was driving with my mom and I just I just got so excited and she was she was really nice enough she drove over to the airport and there was Beatles songs playing on the radio and we sat there and we saw the plane come in and they did not get off the plane yeah but I thought that's as close as I ever got to them but which Beatle was your favorite I could never decide between Paul and George <laughs> I would switch back and forth I'll no like, John here no, no, he was married. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't like that. No. Okay. What about, what's your favorite movie of all time? There's a lot of favorite movies, but probably the most long, consistent one has been her. It affected me as a child when we, my parents took me to see it in a movie theater. And it's a big, epic movie, The, the Chariot Race Alone. The music. the music. Now, we're talking about the 50s version, not 59. the version from 59. the... <laughs> the 59 one with Charlton Heston is still, the music is just epic. What about a... <laughs> Your favorite memory as a mother so far? Oh, oh, that's easy. Holding my newborn babies for the first time. Yeah. There's there's nothing like it. It's just giving birth and then seeing them in the little isolate and then holding them. There's Yeah, there's nothing like it. Little newborn snuggles. Mm -hmm. Most important thing your mother taught you? She taught me a lot of really, really good things. Actually, I've got to say... Fascinating Womanhood really goes right up there. We said this wasn't about Fascinating Womanhood, but it kind of is. Yeah, that yeah. Way. That was because Fascinating Womanhood covers character mm -hmm. and all those things. And, and uh, she taught me some other things, too, but that was probably the most valuable thing she taught me. Okay, what about your favorite snack? Oh, <laughs> I don't hardly ever have it because it's not good for you, but it's... Uh, uh, apple fritter donuts. Oh, yeah, and I, I, I have one. Maybe I split one with Bob. Maybe once or twice a year. That's it. Aww, they're just <laughs> makes me they're sad. just too bad for you. <laughs> they're like this big, and they're yeah. super yummy. But I just it's a gut bomb too, and so they don't. You know, mm -hmm. when you eat, when you think, oh, that didn't look really. Right. Bad. But it sure tastes good. What is your favorite thing to eat for dinner? If I only had to pick one type of food. To have forever, it would probably be seafood. Yeah, it, I love it. It's so light and fresh. Mm -hmm. And you don't get much of it here where we are. Like it's it's a little bit harder. It's to harder find. with uh, with flash frozen stuff. You can get, you know, used to be you could never get it. Yeah, sea from the sea you could get lake food, but that's yeah. not my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Uh, what oh. about a food that you would not eat? Oh, that's easy. Black licorice. Black licorice. Absolutely <laughs> hate it. 
<laughs> so, back when Bob eats it, I kind of like. Oh. First thing you learn to cook or bake. If I picked a thing to cook, it would probably be meatloaf because my mother could trust me with mixing this stuff together, and I loved her meatloaf. And and of baking, it would be her bread because she made it oh, all yeah, the time. Right. Yeah. She did it from scratch. She ground her own flour. That's why you're so good at making bread. <laughs> whole wheat flour. Yeah, she ground it. How do you handle rude people on the internet? Oh, that's easy. I, I tend to scroll past yeah. because... Uh, Nobody ever went. We talk about a fascinating woman and no one wins arguments. You don't win those. If you think you've got a zinger, you don't. They'll just come back with something. Mm -hmm. What did you study in college? Oh, English and, and creative writing. And then I didn't become a creative writer. But, <laughs> it was still, well, but I still love to read and I still love literature. So. Well, and you wrote. You wrote I a did book. write a book, but it wasn't, it wasn't creative. creative. <laughs> Favorite city you've ever traveled to? My very first thought was London. Uh, the British Isles, Scotland. Well, our British ladies will love to hear that, that you like London. And I, have, love that. And I have uh, some British ancestry, too. When was the last time you were in London? Uh, it, was in the, it was in the 2000s. It was, uh, I think it was 2004, something oh, like that. Oh, long time. Way too, way too long. Long yeah. time. So you want to go back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Places you'd like to travel to. Well, I gotta say, Australia is right at the top of the list because our daughter Lisa lives there with her husband. We haven't got to travel there because of the virus, and so that's top of the list. And then I'd love to go to Tahiti. I'd love to go to Scandinavia because I've got Andalin is Swedish, mm -hmm. Forsyth is Scottish. So you guys love to travel. I do. Yeah. I do. I don't have any interest in going to Somalia though, or some right. of those dangerous places. Yeah. I wish I could go to Egypt. I love the history of that Egypt. Would be really I really wish cool. it was safe to go there. I would love to go there. Yeah. What about the best advice anyone has ever given you? The first thing that comes into my mind is, and it may not be the best, but is uh, my, I remember the day my mother said, "If other people can do it, so can you." Uh, it, she first said it when I was going to get a driver's license, and I said I was scared. She said, look at all these people. If they can do it, so can you. And then she said it again when I was going to have my first baby. Look at all these people. You know, So that has helped me throughout my life. If other people can do it, I probably can too. That's good. Yeah, I love that. And the last one, if you had the chance to write another book, what would it be about? Oh, actually, we, that's easy because we've kind of talked about it. I think... Timeless has so many chapters in it, but some of the chapters could be an entire book. We've talked about that. Femininity could be an entire book. Girlishness could be a character could be. So probably every chapter in that book could be its own book. There's so much within each chapter that we just, because who wants to read a book that's it? Yeah. So. I think another one we've talked about too is a cookbook. Yeah, we're, that would be fun we've too. got we've got an idea in mind for a cookbook. We've started gathering recipes for cooking for him. In other words, foods that men almost universally like. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this. This has been really fun, and I hope everyone else out there enjoyed it. <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit. have some a little bit of time my kids are playing in the other room and we thought we might do our nails and I'm in mom's bedroom right now you can kind of see it and we thought 
it would be fun because mom just got this brand new nail kit that we've been dying to try out. Yep. It's not affiliated or anything like that. It's just something that we're something doing. We like. Um, so this is a gel at home polish and we have this little, this cute little chair that we can sit on. And we got this little UV LED um, gel, dryer. gel dryer and we're gonna try it out and share this with you. So here we go. Okay, so we just finished uh, doing our little Hello. a little toenail uh, trial thing with our Amazon toenail gel kit. So we'll just show Sherry's tan and I am not. Well, I can definitely recommend this gel kit. It's really easy to do. As you can see, it's really bright and sparkly and shiny. today homemade marshmallows. We've got one of our granddaughters, Vivi, here with us and she's going to help us, not with the hot part, but with the other part. Yeah. So it's not hard when we told our grandson, he said, you can make marshmallows. Yeah, yeah you can make them. You can make them. Someone has to make them. And they're easy, right? Oh, yeah, they're actually easy and they're way better, way better than store-bought. So, you start with three packages of gelatin, unflavored, and a bowl of a mixer. Could you put some uh, powdered sugar in here? And she's going to generously dust with powdered sugar or confectioner's sugar this pan. And this will make the marshmallows not stick. And while the gelatin is softening, I'm going to put um, one and a half cups of white sugar. Is that? I'm putting the sugar. 
sugaring. Over here we have corn syrup, just plain old corn syrup. One cup. A fourth of a teaspoon is what it says, but I just use the pincher because it's fine. Until the sugar basically melts. That's it. See, and this is not hot at all yet. I just turned it on. And so it has to kind of heat up. 240 degrees and I estimate it but you can if you have a candy thermometer you can do that see it's not hot yet candy thermometer I'm gonna use it because it's actually easier more accurate strawberry slash raspberry ones today. So we're going to use strawberry extract and freeze dried. We need freeze dried fruit, not, not wet because it'll add too much moisture to it. And you can make chocolate ones, you can mm. make coconut ones, you can make any flavor really. Uh, coconut is good if you put the extract in it and then you put toasted marshmallow on the top. And then once you pour the marshmallows into this pan, you generously dust the top of it with a powdered sugar because that keeps it from being sticky. And then you let it set, the recipe says overnight, until they get kind of dried out. And when they get dried out, and they're not so sticky either, you dump it out, and you cut them in squares. One of my daughters knows somebody in her, near her that has a whole business just making homemade marshmallows. Wow. All different flavors, that's all she does, and she's very successful. So, marshmallows can be serious business. And they're delicious. All right, this is now at 240, softball stage, so we'll carefully take this out. This is very hot. And what we'll do is we'll slowly pour Slow speed, you don't want to wear it. It just melts the water. <laughs> this look like Spidey. <laughs> Spidey, <Nice>. spider webs. <laughs> Must be patient to make this recipe. Just a little bit. Think <laughs> spider -Man. Now, this looks good already. <laughs> I checked them. They're so dry, I loosen the edges. <laughs> I can pick it up. It looks like 
it's my mattress. I know, it kind of does. But it's still squishy, like it Yeah, it's kind of rubbery, like it's supposed to be. So maybe I'll put a little bit of this on the floor just yeah. to... Raspberry? Mm -hmm. That's really good. We were saying how it'd be kind of yummy in some like raspberry tea, or if you mm -hmm. did chocolate ones, you could do chocolate hot and chocolate. hot chocolate. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> They're really good. Okay, so today we're going to be making cinnamon rolls. Uh, we've had some requests for cinnamon roll recipe. I make these all the time. I'm not going to show you how to make the dough because this is just the Grammy bread dough recipe that we've already given you. You can look that up and make this. And I like to let it raise in one of these kind of containers because it can show you when it's doubled. You can see it has measuring on it. So this is already doubled. It's ready to roll out. So we just... If it comes out, that is, <laughs> it will. Yeah, see, it comes out pretty good.
cinnamon rolls are finely risen, um, both pans, we're going to pop them in the oven. For around 30 minutes, I'm going to put it on at 20 and then check it.